funny, isn't it, how a name from the past can become like this uh, shorthand for resisting anything new. You say Luddite today and it's like you're picturing someone who refuses to even touch a smartphone yeah it's an easy label right like you can just slap it on anyone who seems a little resistant to the latest tech but i think it really misses so much of the nuance of what that word really means totally and i think that's what makes this deep dive so fascinating we're really digging into the real luddite movement back in the 19th century definitely and specifically we're looking at this episode from the podcast echoes of time called the forgotten fighters of the luddite oh that's a fitting title i think yeah. <laughs> because this is a story about people who are really fighting for their livelihoods during a time of just immense technological upheaval exactly so we're talking early 1800s england here the Industrial Revolution is in full swing. Factories are popping up like crazy, really changing the landscape. Yeah, and not everyone's thrilled about it. I bet. Yeah. But <laughs> just, just picture this. You're a highly skilled weaver, right? Your family's depended on your craft for generations. It's all you've ever known. And suddenly these machines, these so-called spinning jennies and power looms, they start appearing everywhere. And they're faster, cheaper. Yeah, I can see how that'd be pretty unsettling at the least. Unsettling is putting it mildly. I mean, this quickly turned into a crisis because these machines didn't just make things faster. They could be operated by less skilled, lower paid workers. And that meant that suddenly the livelihood of entire communities, people who had done this for generations, was in jeopardy. Yeah, and the podcast really drives home that feeling of desperation. You really get a sense of like, an entire way of life being completely disrupted. And it wasn't just about fearing machines, right? It was about people seeing their skills, skills they'd honed for years, potentially becoming obsolete almost overnight. And with very few other options in that era. Right. This is a time very different than today. And the Echoes of Time episode, it highlights how the Luddites weren't simply against progress as they're often portrayed, you know? Right. Like they understood what technology could do. They just opposed this unchecked wave of it. Like the way it was being implemented without any regard for the workers whose lives were being totally upended. Precisely, yeah. Their anger, it wasn't directed at innovation itself. It was at a system that seemed to value profit over people. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think this whole legend of General Ludd emerges. Okay, so let's talk about this mysterious figure. Was this a real person or just a symbol? Because I've always been curious about that. It's a good question. Historians are still debating that one. Hmm. Um, the podcast mentions that some believe he was a real worker. Maybe his name was Ned Ludd, who, the story goes, smashed these stocking frames in protest. Hmm. Um, others see him more as this kind of mythical figurehead. But either way, the name became powerful. Like he became this, I don't know, symbol of the frustration that so many skilled workers were feeling. Absolutely. And that frustration started to, well, translate into action particularly in the textile mills of Nottingham around 1811. And this wasn't just some random vandalism, right? The podcast really emphasized that the Luddites were strategic in their actions. Oh, without a doubt. Echoes of Time details how they would often operate at night, targeting specific factories, usually the ones that were known for mistreating workers or trying to undercut wages. So there was a message behind the destruction. Absolutely. It wasn't just about trying to cause chaos. It was about sending a very clear message to factory owners. And to the government. And remember, these were skilled artisans themselves. Right. They understood this machinery. They knew which parts were essential, which ones would cause the most disruption if they were destroyed. It was a form of protest rooted in their actual expertise. Yeah, it wasn't just like mindless destruction. It was targeted, almost, I don't know, surgical in a way. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is it's important to remember that the Luddites often saw themselves as upholding this moral code. They had a sense of fairness within their craft and community. And so their actions, while illegal, were seen by many as a very desperate attempt to protect their way of life and demand a system where technology and skilled labor could actually coexist. Yeah, and that message really seemed to resonate, right? Because the podcast talks about how this Luddite movement really starts to spread beyond Nottingham. Oh, it totally did. Yeah. I mean, think about it. This is pre-internet, pre-mass media, and yet word of these acts, it traveled, right? Mm -hmm. People were inspired by this. People who were facing similar anxieties in their own mill towns across England started to hear about it. The Echoes of Time episode, it mentions how whole regions across Northern England saw a surge in this kind of machine breaking activity. It makes you wonder about 
those networks, like how information traveled back then? Was it like secret meetings or like coded messages? I know, it's fascinating. That's part of what makes this period so compelling. I mean, historians have found evidence of handbills, you know, these things printed up, secret oaths people would take, even songs. They use songs to spread the word and rally support. Because these were very interconnected communities at that time. They were bound by these trades, these crafts. Yeah, so I'm sure the authorities must have been freaking out, right? Trying to figure out how to crack down on what was becoming a serious, serious movement. Oh, yeah. Put yourself in their shoes. Yeah. This wasn't just about some property damage. This was about people challenging the very idea of industrial progress. This was the engine of the British Empire at that time. Mm -hmm. Challenging industrial progress, like challenging the whole system. Yeah, no wonder they came down so hard. And the podcast mentioned this attack on Rawfold's Mill in 1812 as this major turning point. Oh, it was a tragic one. Yeah. The mill owner was this guy named William Cartwright. And he was notorious for being really harsh on his workers, yeah. like really, really rough on them. And get this, he actually fortified his mill. Like he knew it was coming. He was anticipating a Luddite attack. Wow. So this wasn't some spur of the moment thing. This was planned. The Luddites planned this out carefully. Yeah, they did. And yeah. Echoes of Time really brings that night to life. Like you can almost picture it. Under the cover of darkness, over 100 Luddites approaching the mill, yep. armed with hammers, axes. Some of them even had these crude firearms. But Cartwright, he was ready for them. He was. And this fierce gun battle erupts. Can you imagine? Right there at the mill. The Luddites were ultimately repelled, but several of them were killed, and many more were wounded. And it was a turning point, not just because of the violence, but because it really shifted public perception of the movement. Like it turned the tide against them. It definitely gave the government the justification that they needed to really crack down, and I mean really crack down. Parliament actually passed laws making machine breaking punishable by death after this. Death, wow, that's extreme. It really is, but it just shows you the level of fear surrounding this movement, right? Like mm. to them, the Luddites represented way more than just some disgruntled workers. They were a threat to social order, to the idea of progress itself. Yeah, it's like those in power, they saw any kind of resistance, even if it was for understandable reasons, as a slippery slope, they gave an inch. Who knows what would happen next? Exactly. And for those skilled artisans, the ones who really did see this machine breaking as their last resort to protect their livelihoods, these laws were just devastating. Uh, By 1813, the organized Luddite movement was effectively crushed. Yeah. Hundreds were arrested, some executed, others transported to penal colonies. A pretty grim ending. It is. It's really grim. But you know what's remarkable to me? It's that even in defeat, the Luddites, they sparked this debate that's still going on today. How do we balance technological advancement with human well-being? It's a question we're still asking ourselves. It's kind of wild how relevant it all feels even now, you know? Like, we're not out there smashing robots yet, at least. But all this anxiety we have about automation and AI taking jobs and stuff, it feels really similar to what the Luddites were going through, doesn't it? It's totally the same underlying tension, right? This feeling that technology is changing faster than ever before, yeah. leaving some people behind and making everyone wonder what the future holds. Yeah, exactly. And it's like you were saying earlier how their name, it gets thrown around so casually, but listening to that Echoes of Time episode, it's so clear these weren't just people who were afraid of progress, like they were highly skilled, they understood how these machines worked. It was about having some control over how that technology changed their world. You know what I mean? 100%. There's this one historian in the episode quotes who called it a struggle for agency in the face of technological dominance, which I think is perfect. They weren't trying to stop the clock. They just wanted to make sure that all the gears weren't grinding people up in the process. Which, if we're being honest, is a concern we're still dealing with. Like, just look at what's happening with AI now. The potential is incredible, obviously, but there are real questions about jobs going away and all these ethical things we haven't even figured out yet. And that to me is like the biggest takeaway from the Lunites. They're this reminder that just blindly believing in progress without thinking about the human cost can have consequences we don't expect. They force us to actually ask progress for whom and at what price? Those are the questions we have to be asking. Totally. So as we're wrapping up this deep dive into the Luddites, what would you say is the one thing our listeners should really take away from their story? Knowing what we know now, what can we learn from their fight? I think the message is be informed, be engaged. Technology isn't this neutral force. Like the choices we make, the policies we enact, the values we build into technology, they matter. 
The Luddites were sounding the alarm back then. And I think it's up to all of us to listen to those echoes, to ask the tough questions, and to make sure that progress doesn't come at the expense of our shared humanity, you know? To make sure that the future we're building has room for everybody, not just the machines. Wow, that is a powerful thought to end on. Thank you so much for taking this deep dive with me. It's definitely given me a lot to think about. Thanks for having me, it was great.